data. For many educators, this term might feel intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. In this video, I will be going over the basics of data-driven instruction. I will also be showing you an easy and quick way to monitor your student progress and drive your instructional practice with data using Google Forms and Sheets. Now, I'm a huge fan of data, so brace yourself because this will be nerdy. Data-driven instruction can be broken down into three main steps data collection, data analysis, and lastly, action. Let's look at these steps in more detail. Step one, data collection. The first thing you wanna do on your data-driven instructional journey is to decide on what type of data you will be monitoring. Now, there are many different things that you can collect data on in your classrooms. Things like performance data, standards, learning targets and skills, behavioral data, attendance, engagement, and even IEP data for specific students. So how will you be collecting this data? You can use formative and summative assessments, baseline and endline assessments. You could use video recordings of your own class, anecdotal notes, student surveys, or you can ask your school's instructional coach to come in for a non-evaluative classroom visit and help you collect data that way. You can also use technology to make your data collection process a lot faster and easier. Make sure to keep watching till the end of this video because I will be showing you one way to do just that using Google Forms and Sheets. Step two, once you have collected all of your data, it is now time for the fun part, data analysis. Now this is where you make sense of your data. What does this all mean? Watch for patterns, draw conclusions, and formulate an action plan. Ask yourself, how does this data help inform your practice? What changes might need to take place in your classrooms based on this data? Step three, it's time for action. Based on the results of your data, create an action plan. This might include a plan for reteaching a certain standard the students have not yet demonstrated mastery in, or it might look like the creation and implementation of an intervention plan. Not sure where to start with this step? An instructional coach might be a great resource for this step as well. Now that we have all the steps of data-driven instruction covered, let me show you an example of how this might look like in action. For this particular example, I'm going to be using Google Form in order to track a scientific skill for an entire semester, specifically scientific inquiry. Notice that my Google Form also includes the standard that I am going to be tracking for that whole semester. This Google Form aligns with a rubric. The rubric is standard-based, which means that it has the four, the four levels of mastery. Now, obviously, every time a student would perform an experiment, um, I would tally up their total score and um, then go to my Google Form and kind of input that, th that data in the Google Form for quick for quick access. So you will notice that in this Google form, I have all of the student names and I decided to choose the drop down menu for easy access. And then I've listed all the experiments that the students will be conducting for that particular semester. It's very important that I'm using the exact same rubric to assess the students throughout the entire semester every time they conduct an experiment in order for my data to be valid. So once I have this set up and I have all the elements ready, Every time that um, we would conduct an experiment, um, I would be, like I said, using the rubric to tally up their total score. And then I would just go in and fill in the score of each student for each of the experiments we've done throughout the semester. So for example, let's assume that student A got a four in experiment one, they got a two in experiment two, they got a three in experiment three, they got a one in experiment four, and then they got a three in experiment five. So um, I would basically be tracking this um, data and then perhaps inputting it towards the end of the semester. And then I would click on submit. Once I'm done inputting um, all of the data for the first student, I will just continue to do the same for all my other students. Once I have all the responses inputted for all of my students, I am going to go ahead and click on create spreadsheet. Now that you have all of your data aggregated, there are a few things that you can do in order to analyze this data. The first thing you can do is use the conditional formatting option in order to visually and quickly assess the data that you have in front of you in terms of student progress. 
So in order to set up conditional formatting, you will highlight all of the cells that contain the numerical data. And then you're going to click on Format, Conditional Formatting. On the right hand side, click on Color Scale. And where it says Preview down here, I'm going to change the, change the default uh, color from green to red and green. All right, and then um, since since our values are not uh, based on a hundred point system, our, our values are based on a one to four um, standard based grading scale. I'm going to change this. So instead of um, this being a percentile, I'm going to click on number, and then for the minimum value, I'm also going to change it to number, and the maximum value, I'm also going to change it to number. So notice right away, I'm going to click on, it's already, uh, sorry, it recognizes that the minimum number is one and that the maximum number is four. The midpoint is, I'm going to, I'm going to indicate it as three. You could put 2.5. So whatever, whatever it is you want to um, associate with, with your data. And then right away, you will notice that you now have a quick visual representation or of where the students are. Uh, in terms of each experiment. So right away, I, I, I can tell that for experiment one, for example, students A and student E are exceeding expectations. So they are good to go for experiment one. Um, the, the, the students that I should probably pay attention to, maybe reteach some concepts, maybe provide them with extra practice, are gonna be students C and D for experiment one. So if you were inputting this data after each experiment, then you can quickly um, set this up and then have a quick visual um, indicator of where each student is standing in terms of their scores for that particular assignment. And what this would do is allow you um, to quickly recognize the students that are struggling and perhaps might need um, intervention. Another thing that this can help you uh, notice is that, for example, in experiment two, most of the students uh, did not perform very well, right? So most of the students are, have, have scores that are in the red, so either uh, developing or approaching. And therefore, perhaps experiment two, the students didn't really get, maybe I didn't do a very good job of explaining that experiment. Um, maybe I need to go back and revisit that experiment and look at how can I improve either the experiment or my teaching or instructional practices associated with this particular assignment. Another great thing you can do in your Google Sheets is um, use a sparkline chart in order to visually represent the student progress. Now, I would probably use this towards the end of a semester after I have inputted all of the experiments here and I wanna see how the students have progressed um, with this particular skill or with this particular standard throughout the semester. I can then maybe use this data in, a, uh, in one of the parent-teacher conferences or the student-led conferences, maybe, maybe share this data with the students and have them reflect on their own progress throughout this whole semester for this particular skill. So in order to create a spark, sparkline chart, and maybe I can add sparkline chart as a heading just so that I know. So this is super easy. All you have to do is type in the sparkline function. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the cell um, that will be associated with student A and I'm going to uh, type equal sparkline and I'm going to highlight all of the cells associated with student one. So all of this row. Close my bracket and click on enter. All right, and all I have to do next is simply click on the lower right-hand side and drag it down. And look how awesome this is. I'm sorry, I'm such a data nerd. Um, this makes me super happy. <laughs> um, but right away you can tell like student A, kind of their performance has been fluctuating. It's, it's been all over the, uh, the place for this whole semester when it came to this particular science skill. Um, on the other hand, student B, they started off pretty good, but then they kind of, um, you know, went down uh, or decreased in terms of their mastery level. Uh, student, students D, I should probably send their parents a email um, congratulating this particular student on their improvement for this particular skill throughout this semester like they started off really low and then they improved drastically and on the other hand for student e perhaps i need to have a one-on-one -on -one with them because they have you know 
they started off really well and they kind of have really dipped down with their performance. So maybe something is going on with student E. Maybe um, you know they're not they're not um, focusing in class as much as they used to at the beginning of the semester. Uh, maybe something is happening in their personal life that we need to talk about. Maybe the student um, needs more, you know, more one-on-one -on -one reteaching. So there's so much that you can get informed on by something as simple as the Sparkline chart option. Make sure to give this video a like if you found it useful. And if you would like to see more of videos like this, consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and have a great day.